Yo, what's good, YouTube? It's your boy MRPG. I hope you're having an amazing morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. And today, well, today I got my first haircut in three years. Pretty cool, right? Uh, today, we can, well, it's field trip time. And I think it's going to be our last field trip of this epic game. So come join me. As we possibly get on an airship, one would assume. Okay, so you were just pointless. <laughs> Come on, someone here. Ooh, kitty! <coughs> oh. Bye, Celine. I'm told to meet you at 9am. Seems like I still have some time. No idea what this is all about, but it'd probably be a good idea to finish preparing. Good, good. You're all here. Oh, it's I wasn't expecting you to be... Huh? Sharon? When you in the dormitory when we left? Indeed I was, but I was summoned here by Lady Sarah. So after seeing you all, all you off, I came straight here. How did I... I guess she'd... Get here ahead of us. You know, at this point I shouldn't really be surprised. Sheesh, she ain't the Reinford's top maid for nothing. Personally, I would have preferred not to ask her to come at all. But since she'll be acting as Group A's guide, I didn't have much of a choice. Wait, why would we need a guide? So you're telling me... Oh, well, looks like everyone's here already. Who's Emma? Oh god, I literally forgot her name. Oh, Sharon's here too. What's she doing here? Cooking, cleaning, instant... Oh, never mind. It took me half an hour to gather what instantaneous. It just, it just didn't... You know what, never mind. Well, we've all got all of you here now. Look at that, 9am, right on time. Ladies and gentlemen, I think I called it. Sounds like a rush of air. No, it's not quite it. Sounds to me like an airship. Are you kidding me? I'm a genius. I do this in games I play. I do this in movies I watch. I do this in animes. There are people watching right now who are probably like, Oh, he's already played this game before. Or, oh, he's already watched this game. It really isn't that hard of a call. Just if you, you know. Anyway. GG's, yay me. What the hell is that? Here they come. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, do. I wonder if in like number two we're going to be like an airship and we just go around helping and stuff. That'd be so cool. Okay, so it's red, so I'd assume it's the Imperial, uh, it's one of those crimson ones. The Chancellor's thing. yeah, this has taken way too long. What's this thing even doing here? Wow, it's so cool. Crimson airship. Who does it belong to? An Imperial Army warship, maybe. Nah, not enough giant guns. That is huge. Still, the shape looks familiar. Laura, um... So... When I'm at... When I'm at... You know what? Never mind. I now remember. It's like the... Okay, well... Wasn't what I was thinking, but... I mean, white... You know what, never mind. White Wings of the Bell. You think so too, right? Y y yeah, yeah, that's what it looks like, yeah. You mean the Arce? Now that you mentioned it, I just did a resemblance. The Arce, wasn't that a high-speed cruiser from the Kingdom of the Bell? Indeed, it was on that very airship that Prince Oliver made his triumphant return to Heimdall. Mm -hmm. No way! They're not seriously going to land here, right? Of course they are. 
Might be a bit of a snug fit, but they should be able to touch down. You've got to be kidding me. Wait a minute, how do you know how large is? Trust me, she's got experience. That is a badass looking ship. It doesn't even have no guns in it. Oh yeah, it does. <laughs> this is the best. It's actually very pretty up close. The more I look at it, the more it seems just like the RC except red. It bears the crest of Erebonia though. But at the very least, it's an airship from the Empire. Salutations, my beautiful friends. It's only been 10 days since last we met, but I couldn't keep myself away. Oliver. To. Prince Oliver. And Major Van. <laughs> Poor guy. Your just slack <laughs> jawed amazement <laughs> says it all. I still haven't looked into if he is Matt Mercer, but he sounds so much like him. It looks like this will be quite the crowd pleaser during its grand unveiling in Heimdall. Wait, what grand unveiling? Man, I don't even know what's going on anymore. Who may you be referring to? They have a gentleman It's been on quite board. some time. I see many familiar faces gathered here today, and several I've yet to have the pleasure of meeting. Is it finally the Emperor, or is it Sean Connery? I see many familiar faces gathered here today. Is that? I know that voice. Oh. Oh, never mind. The Radiant Blade Master? Father! So that's Laura's dad? Wait, who's the one now? <laughs> and look, Tobol's with him too. <laughs> this isn't quite how I expected our grand reunion to go, that's for sure. Yay, Tobol's got a voice! What are you doing up there? And what's with the hat? Allow me to introduce you. This is Captain Victor S. Arced, who will be assuming command of the ship. Uh. <gasps> <laughs> so that's what this is about. <laughs> I'll fill you in on the details another time. What in the name of Adios is that? Walking. Wow, what a pretty ship. This thing's a real piece of work. Incredible. I've heard about the specs, but the numbers don't do it justice. Looks even better alive than on paper. George has a voice. Principal Van Dyke, you too? <laughs> um, could someone fill us in on what exactly is going on here? <laughs> Your bafflement is quite understandable. The chairman of the board proposed a change to your travel arrangements for this month's field study. He's agreed to deliver all of you to your respective destinations aboard this airship. What? <whistles> we'll be riding in style. <laughs> He's mainly taking it on its maiden voyage to unveil the ship to the nation. We're just kind of along for the ride. You'll be headed to the capital first. But from there, it'll be a straight shot to Ruhr. Wow. I'm not sure what to say. Oh, this is all so sudden. I think I need to sit down. Well, should we be off, Your Highness? I guess it's their first time flying, maybe? I guess this is a bigger thing than I... Yeah, it is. Yes, that sounds marvelous. With that, let me be the first to welcome you, Class 7. Aboard the second Arsail Class High Speed Cruiser, the Courageous. Nice. So I thought the L's would be silent because there's a football team in France called Marseille. So I just went with Arsail, but Arsail, okay. And it's spelt like that, but with an M at the beginning. You know what? It seems like everything I've pronounced in this game has been wrong. So let's just keep it that way. I mean, to be fair, I have been called Mackie as Mackie the whole game. The Machina. Go play Final Fantasy X. Nice.
New music, man. Hey, let's go! Oh, Heimdall's the capital. Okay. I think. I wonder if it's going to go over all the areas we've been to. Maybe not. Oh, this music, man. So good. And we've never heard this piece. God, that violinist is going in right now. Flowing a bit, flying a bit low, isn't you there, mate? This music's insane! There he is. Such a magician that his hair clips through his clothes. Jeez, Heimdall's big. And now, and next to Palace, maybe? Not even a high speed trains could hope to match that. We still have our own strengths. How's the investigation coming along? Well, they've been pretty blatant about trying to obstruct us, so basically, about what we expected. Same is true in other areas as well. Understood. Respond with pattern 13. I'll head there myself this afternoon. Yes, my queen! Why does this feel like a... Like an, a, an end of credit scene, do you know what Why, I mean? what a spectacular sight! My brother told me all about it, but there's no substitute for seeing it soar through the skies. Simply beautiful. Yes, it really is. <laughs> You're up there, aren't you, Rain? There's the palace. Wait, no, that's not the emperor. Wait, is it? No. That's the courageous. Oliver finally finished his airship. <laughs> it's a fine ship, isn't it? Wait, is that the Emperor? Prince Oliver seems to have gone to quite a lot of trouble having it built. <laughs> is this the wind of change you intend to release across our staid and troubled land? I mean, he looks like their dads. Go, my son. Yeah. And show me the caliber of man you can be. Nice. Finally met him, sort of. He's barely been in this. Barely been in this. Which means he's got to be important in the next games. You you can tell they're like saving certain characters and <clears throat> scenes for the next, you know, set of games. Looking at Chancellor Osborne kind of hurts right now because he's similar. You know, I literally just had three years growth of hair just cut off literally today but you know what <sighs> I miss it no I look better <laughs> can you believe it's been almost two years already just go check out my main channel I, I have my camera on in there I think I'm gonna do a lost dark stream tomorrow I might show my camera and look at it. how far our debaucherous prince has managed to come I don't know let me know what you guys think with, with let's plays do you prefer camera on or camera off when you're watching uh, Let's Plays. Partnering with Liberal to make a second Arcel class airship, then cruising over the capital? I suppose that's one way to stick it to you for outmaneuvering him at the trade conference. <laughs> Let him have his fun for now. Still, this was certainly an unexpected play on his part. He and that band of students he likes to ship across the country have proven a never-ending source of entertainment. But now, my dear Prince Oliver, we have reached a decisive point. The board has been prepared, every piece in its place. Can you turn the tides in your favor? I look forward to finding out. Huh. 
Like, he gives off baddie vibes. Like, he gives off bad guy vibes so much. Nice. Okay. We're gonna get to see inside. Cool, of course we are, because this game's brilliant and doesn't take any shortcuts. It's currently 10.02 and we have a north-northwesterly wind blowing in at a speed of 11 arch. Well, I guess the voice acting is a shortcut, but honestly? If only, at the, so end game, I'm assuming since since hour 65 till now, I think I'm in about 76, 70. This would be perfect voice acting wise. Like this is how frequent it needs to be. I'm so okay with like 50, 50 voice acting and no, non voice acting. But zip, like 10%, I feel like the first 60 hours, it was about 10% maybe 15 but in the end it's getting uh, the voice acting's really picked up which is great we've just passed through the schwartz drake barriers airspace into the province of nortia current speed is 3050 sph we've reached full cruising velocity maintain current course and speed follow the nortia main line maintaining a distance of 200 arch i, I never noticed he kind of sounds like sean connery aye aye captain But this is what the bridge of a cruiser looks like. We're kind of making my head spin. If I'm not mistaken, this ship is equipped with the I Epstein's Foundation's latest information processing system. We actually managed to get the Gr Rhineford Group, Zeiss Central Factory, and the Epstein Foundation to collaborate. Rhineford Zeiss Epstein. Isn't Emma's second name Epstein? I can't remember. I suppose you would be the most well informed in matters of technology. It took the combined effort of countless supporters to take this airship from blueprint to beauty. Of course, a great many people no small amount of trouble gathering the technology and funds to build it. Nice to know even princes have trouble with financing sometimes. Alas, it's true. I had to borrow quite a sum from a number of sources, the Emperor himself among them. But all my labours bore fruit, and we were able to build an airship that met all of my ideal specifications. Now, what what is his plan with this airship? With it's sporting 20 of ZCF's high performance engines, it can achieve a top speed of roughly 3000 SPH. Not quite as fast as the RSA's 3600, but the courageous boasts high armor and interception capabilities. Good grief, she's memorized all the specs already. Still, the more I hear about it, the more unbelievable it sounds. Sounds like he's compensating for something. <laughs> I'd heard something like this was in development. I never would imagine you'd pack this much power into it. Well, now we have a rough idea how extravagant the ship is. But what I don't understand is why my father's sitting in the captain seat. He's not even part of the military. Unless, father, did you actually enlist? I can understand why you might be perplexed. However, the ship isn't part of any military force. Huh? So wait, is it officially regarded as the property of the Imperial family? Precisely. I intend this ship to give wings to a third faction of sorts. Unconnected to both the Imperial and Provincial armies. To that end, I could think of no finer captain than Viscount Arsayid. Cool! I <sighs> see what you're getting at, yeah. The fastest airship in the Empire, captain by the Radiant Blade Master. Couldn't ask for a stronger deterrent than that. I'll say. Well, that's my hope, anyway. About half of the crew here are unknown from my division. The rest are civilians, representing a variety of nationalities and social classes. As for me, I'm here because I'm just that good at gathering info. They've also tasked me as the point man for keeping in touch with the guild and all its local branches. Makes sense. Tovel's definitely a good choice. He's got tact and patience to spare. Me, on the other hand, I'm more the face-punching type. I never had imagined we'd be flying in such a marvel of a ship. With such a distinguished crew. You've got me curious though. Bro, I wonder if this is setting up the next game. I wonder. Like... Oh man, this could be so cool. Like, Oliver is building a third faction 
literally to just go around on this ship and save the world. Do you know what I mean? Obviously not that simple and not that cliche, but in a nutshell, that type of thing. And that, I'm so down if that's the case. Are you intending to tour the whole empire that is? That's our plan, yeah. The hope is that it might help assuage some of the tension that's been building across the nation. And if we happen to intimidate the ILF while we're at it, all the better. Ah, that makes sense, considering they've got their own airship. The intelligence division and the RMP seem to be keeping them in check for now, but having a ship like this in the air will definitely put even more pressure on them. In other words, this ship allows me to kill three birds with one stone. Genius, isn't it? If I ever feel the urge to stretch my wings, I can take to the skies whenever the mood strikes me. Perhaps one day I'll even, able to, even be able to put on a recital soaring in the skies above behind me. <laughs> Excuse me. I just had my dinner. Well, putting aside certain idiotic flights of fantasy, at this speed it should take less than an hour to reach Rua. Feel free to make yourselves at home while you're aboard. Aside from restricted areas like the engine room, you have the run of the ship. Go and poke around a bit. We each set about exploring. I'm assuming it's going to be like in the what's it called area. 76 hours, ladies and gentlemen. 76 hours. Well, closer to 77, if I'm honest. Okay, we can just skim through everyone. Who are you? I like this chip. Damn. By doing that, we hope the Courageous will hold the old guard at bay long enough for something new to take root. Well, we are building an airship this advanced seems excessive. All you're going to use is it as is as it, uh, do, 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 do. you're going to use it as is a deterrent. What? Laura is right. There has to be some other purpose. It was made to fulfill. Oh, oh. Very perceptive of you. I regret that I wasn't able to discuss with you properly when you were in the gram last month. L literally, let's just build the Avengers. Come on, let's do it. Let's just do it. I right, perhaps see just how much you've grown since you enrolled at the academy. I have my class to thank for that. Learning, alongside, learning alongside them has been a constant source of insight. So tell me, Reen, how's she doing? Is Laura getting along with the other students? Huh? I think she's been fitting in fine. I see. That's reassuring to hear. At times I worry that growing up in a sword fighting household caused her to end up less well-rounded than her peers. I hope you and the others will continue looking out for her. Of course. I'm glad she's with us. I can't imagine class 7 without her. Hmm. I can't help but get the feeling that she's something more to you than simply a classmate. Oh, oh, oh. Whatever the truth may be, I hope you can continue treating her as a lady she is. Well, I've been friend zoned by Emma, so I was going to go for her first because she's much more attractive to me and uh, has much better assets. But yeah, I will be moving on to your daughter. <clears throat> it's what I sh want to say. I and she knows is what I don't want to say, but that's what I'm thinking. I'm not one to abide in appropriate behaviour towards my daughter. I, I don't have the faintest idea what you're talking about. But I'd like to think I know how to conduct myself towards my classmates. Good, good. That's what I wanted to hear. <laughs> Two of you going on about with all your whispering and your furtive glances. Uh, it's nothing you need to concern yourself with. Just a little discussion between men. Yeah, men. You needn't worry, we'll be sure to get you to your field study safely. As a student of Taurus, I expect you to give it your utmost. Mm hmm? He really does care about her. Oh, that was adorable. Oh, this is so cool!
Excuse me. How many projects does Mother have under her wing right now? I'm afraid I can't give a simple answer to that. Suffice to say, the chairman only knows about a small number of the projects in development by the Reinford Group. Lately, the directors have... Oh, this sounds bad. I know it. Oh. The directors are starting to take over. Sorry, am I interrupting something? No, it's okay. Have you finished exploring? I expect it'll be a while longer before we reach Rua. Finished, I don't even think I've seen half of it yet. I'm looking forward to landing in Rua though. It's been a while since I've seen the industrial Metropolis! Not too far from my hometown, so I'd always hear about it in past. Oh, that's right, you're from Ymir, so I guess you would then. You want a little refresh? I can bring you to speed. Okay, we're just gonna skim. You, you guys can read if you want. Ah, oh, so it's like Sheffield in the UK. It's a, uh, where is Sheffield? The, uh, the town of steel I can't remember what it's called <sighs> super steel heavy industry industrial area oh yeah and it's it's under uh, Angelica's families and he's one of the four houses last time I visited it felt like the whole city was man made trees and grass were rare sights I hate those kind of cities. Huh. The city is basically a structure divided into several levels. Damn. Mm -hmm. That was when I was a kid. <laughs> yeah, it, it literally is Sheffield. And they got the miners and everything, okay. Okay. <clears throat> In the center, the, the headquarters. Yeah, I, I think the IMP or IFP or whatever they're called. They're going to go for the... Uh, the... Um, the Reinford headquarters. Bro, you know what might happen? They might have people in the directors. They might have people in the directors. And then they might, like, take over somehow. So then you've got, like, the evil villains... Owning the most dangerous company, like, you know, company that could make rockets and nukes and stuff. I don't know. I mean, would you prefer male or female vocals? Female, Reen. Why don't we try both? No, 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 Reen. No. <sighs> okay, two songs. Hey, man. <sighs> Have you got any insane heals or anything like that? Oh, God. Oh, there we go. No, he hasn't got the insane ones. How many of these do I have? Three? I have two of them. I've got twelve of them. Can we, can we, are we all together? So can we cook? Oh, come on! Oh wait, no, I just don't have no... Uh, what's it called? Okay. It, is this the one I need? Yes. 
We need assorted grains. Oh, does he have white beast flesh? No, he doesn't. Damn. Oh, we rich, rich. We rich, rich. So, how do I continue the story? Oh, here we go. Instructor Sarah? Tovo? What are you guys doing out here? Oh, just a little bracer to bracer information swapping. <laughs> That's about the long and short of it. Oh. Been a while since I saw you guys, though. Not since last month in Legram. Yeah, always nice to see a friendly face, though. Well, despite keeping in touch with him and setting up these arrangements, it came as a surprise to me to see him on board, too. Clearly, it was meant to be. Honestly, I was only brought on because of my connection with Viscount Arsay. This airship really is in a class all its own, though. It's not every day you see a ship owned by the Imperial family and captained by the Radiant Blademaster. This cruiser has the potential to be an important force in Erebonia going forward. Without ties to the Imperial or Provincial armies, it can potentially keep both of them in check if need be. It might not be able to do that quite as well as a strong guild presence could, but it'll still help protect a lot of people. That's true. It still frustrates me how the guild used to be an institution here, and now we're just barely keeping the lights on. At least the Crossbell branch sends its people over to help us out when we need a hand, though. Wenzel's one thing, but we owe McLean so many favors, I've lost count. McLean? Wait, are you talking about... Oh, yeah, I guess you would have heard of him. He's an A-rank bracer over at the Crossbell branch. A guy we used to work with named Wenzel works there now, too. Huh, McLean. Wait, maybe we should back it up a bit. The guy we're talking about is Arios McLean, a.k.a. the Divine Blade of Wind. The name probably sounds familiar to you because he's also a practitioner of the Eight Leaves One Blade style. Hey. Yeah, that's who I was thinking of. I've never met him myself, but I heard a lot about him from my master. He mastered the school's second form. It sounds about as untouchable as anyone who holds the title of Divine Blade. Well, he's pretty damn strong, I'll give you that. Bailed me out of more tough spots than I'd like to admit. Speaking of, you know who else is a student of the Eight Leaves School? Cassius Bright. Cool. We were talking about him before, remember? He's the bracer who took command during that big incident two years ago. Though, from what I heard, he left the way of the sword behind a while back. Cassius Bright was here in Erebonia. Wait, two years ago. Eh, it was an eventful time, to put it lightly. So they're talking about a past game here, I'm pretty sure. And yeah, we have Cassius to thank for getting us past that. But afterward, well, you know the story from there. No, I don't. They shuttered guild branches all across the Empire, one after the other. And your dear, oh, okay. sweet instructor was out of a job. I'd be glad to give you all the grisly details, but it's a long story. We should probably save it for another time. But hey... The guild seems to have a good track record with folks from the Eight Leaves School. Maybe you should consider a career as a bracer. Nice! Tour's always open, you know? I'm so down. Me? A bracer? Yes. Huh. I never really thought about it before. Hey, there's enough of us singing the bracer blues without you trying to recruit my students. No, I'm so down. It's literally a witcher. Like, it's literally a witcher. <laughs> never hurts to start them early. Seriously, though, we're always looking for more good people. If that's something you wanted to do, I wouldn't turn you down. I wonder, like, if the second game's gonna advance in years, and everybody's out doing their own thing, and we have to, like, find them all, and meet them all, and talk, and, you know, and they've got their own quests and stuff. I, I, this game could go so many ways, and that's so cool. <laughs> I'll give it some thought. Like, oh man, I actually, I actually haven't even finished yet, right? There's no way they can mess up the end that badly to make me not like this game, right? Um, even if they just give me an average ending, I'm happy. I'm not saying that's going to happen, but anyway. Um, I haven't even finished the game yet and I'm already excited to play number two. 
Uh, it's not going to happen straight after that. I don't know if I'm going to play another JRPG before this. <sighs> I thought about playing Xenoblade Chronicles because uh, I was watching the Nintendo Direct the other day and Xenoblade Chronicle 3 got released or something. So I thought about playing the original Xenoblade. I've never played it before. Um, and it's probably a way of playing that on PC. I don't know. Is there any, like, is there any other JRPGs I've missed other than Trails of Cold Sea? And I'm not talking about old school JRPGs. I just am not a fan of top-down JRPGs, if you know what I mean. Like, the old school Final Fantasy 1 JRPGs. Hmm. Maybe one day I'll play them, you know, down the line. But I'm talking, you know, more 3D Xenoblade Chronicles. I need to play Dragon Quest Eight because Dragon Quest XI is one of the best JRPGs I've ever played. Um, so let me know. Let me know. I, I need JRPG fans. I have barely played any of the legendary JRPGs. Don't for, the only Final Fantasy I've played for God's sake is Final Fantasy X. So give me some suggestions other than Trails of Cold Steel.